Hi, this is Steve Caliper, and uh, we're certainly uh, grateful that uh, you're a part of our Doing Good Better University and this journey together. Um, in this session um, that I want to share uh, with all of you today <clears throat> is, is really the opportunity to look a little bit deeper, um, as well as both the overall approach and strategy with tactics as it relates to connecting uh, with a level of intimacy and clarity. You've heard me share about clarity, creating confidence, undergirded with the uh, uh, why you do what you do as a, as a message. But really what I want to discuss and share with you today is really the art of connecting relationally and uh, intimately with donors, supporters, um, key champions, individuals, whether it be a one-on-one -on -one meeting, small group environment, or even a donor retreat or a gala. Um, and I know there's a lot of different variances and nuances to that. Um, the level of intimacy and connecting from a heartfelt connection, both um, relationally, emotionally, verbally, um, whether it be a one-on-one, -on -one, small group, luncheons, a donor retreat, or even a gala. Um, and, and so I'm going to unpack that um, uh, for us today. Um, but certainly we are grateful for you and certainly grateful that you're a part of the Doing Good Better University in this journey together. So um, a part of this process is really the design to making sure that you're moving people from just supporting you to really becoming a champion. And uh, the champion is, uh, as I've shared in, in past um, lessons, um, is moving someone to realizing and seeing what you're doing as an organization, to letting them believe and feel the actual belief and the feeling of this is what we're doing and accomplishing and achieving together. So it's that togetherness. That's the connection that, that we're shooting for. And so when we look at um, the one-on-one, -on -one, um, certainly we want to make sure that we're numerically looking at who are the donors, as I've shared before, who are the donors that have given um, in the current calendar year that you want to connect with, have a visit with, go deeper with. Um, potential laps are those that gave in the previous calendar year and have yet not to give this year. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we're connecting with them. And then there's a lot of others as it relates to those that you know, know the organization, but have yet to give, or maybe those that are lapsed for a long time. But the two key groups that we want to focus in on are those that are current active supporters and those that gave in the previous calendar year that haven't yet given this year in, um, in, in four different ways. One-on-one, um, -on -one, uh, small group settings, whether it be a lunch, uh, um, an evening, maybe a dessert gathering, a retreat, or a gala or banquet, because we're in banquet gala season. Um, I know with a lot of organizations, uh, we do donor retreats. In fact, um, had already two in the last couple of weeks, and we've got some coming up with some organizations that we're currently currently serving. Um, but um, let me let me kind of set the stage as it relates to what does the donor expect when we look at what does the donor expect in that that time of conversation. I believe the donor is expecting, frankly, and, and flat out, I believe that the donor is expecting that we're going to share with them results. And I believe that the donor is also asking us to share stories because we need to connect in our hearts. We need to share with them what's happening from the field, whether that field is um, in Santa Ana, California, or uh, South Dallas, or downtown Atlanta, uh, or in the suburb communities of, of wherever it is that you live, or if it's in Kenya or South Africa or anywhere around the world, the donors want you to know results. They want to know the results of what it is that you were able to accomplish and achieve that maybe no one else is able to, that you're in a unique position to make a difference and make an impact, change the world, um, uh, glorify God in all that you're doing, etc. And they also want to hear stories. So that's kind of a given expectation. But the other expectation that the, the donor is really desiring and wanting is an authenticity and a realness. Um, an openness of uh, transparency, a realness, and, um, and, and, and being that they're a part of the journey and not pitched to. And they're not being pitched, whether it be a one-on-one -on -one or, or a banquet. So I want to make sure that, that, that you're all hearing, uh, for what it's worth, um, from my experience, is that we really want to make sure that the donor is feeling a sense of worthiness, credibility, and authenticity, which, it, which I think is, is very important uh, in, the, in this journey. Um, so let me, un let me unpack a little bit to kind of the flow, um, whether it be a banquet or a retreat setting. Now, a retreat setting is basically a banquet spread out. 
the retreat from our playbook is um, an actual 20-hour retreat that begins typically on a Thursday evening uh, from a, a reception, a gathering. Um, we I facilitate intros and get everybody connected quickly in the room, whether they know each other or not. It gives everybody a sense of comfort, uh, credibility as it relates to everybody that's there. And then we shift to the conversation being why we're here. Why we're here from a why we're gathering, as well as why we're here from a mission. Uh, maybe it's... Um, 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 a themed base uh, while we're here, whether it be at-risk kids, um, finding Christ in the crisis as related to something in the Middle East, etc., church planning, reaching millennials with the message of Christ, whatever it happens to be, we want to make sure that there's a defined moment where it is why we're here, why we're gathered. Uh, it gives people in the room a chance to look at each other and say, we're here together because together we're better. Uh, hopefully you get, get a sense of that. Um, so the, the retreat format is, um, is the why we're here. Um, the, the next morning is um, we kick it off with devotion. And then we look very tactically and strategically to how do we do what we do. And we want to look under the hood. We want to look at the tactics to the uniqueness of the organization, the, the mission on the field or in the field. We want to make sure that we're defining with clarity. Um, this is what we do. This is how we do it. And then these are the results in the stories. Um, interfaced uh, maybe over a couple hours period with some videos, um, testimonials. Maybe there's even a donor or quote champion in the room that we want to have be a part of the program to, to kind of share a little bit about um, what it is about the organization that they support. Um, and, then we, um, and then we wrap up the morning, let everybody kind of get settled, and we come back and over lunch. We um, go a little bit deeper to strategic initiatives, what it is that we're wanting to accomplish and why. So we've got to be looking at the future. We've got to be looking at, this is great, but now what? Um, you know, in a capitalistic American society, um, these are great results. This is a great impact. These are great desired um, outcomes and stories of what's been accomplished to date. But I believe that the American donor um, and the philanthropist today wants to know, where are you going? What does it look like over the next three months, six months, 18 months, 24 months? Basically, what is it that you feel that you can accomplish based on what you've been able to achieve to date? And I believe that that's where the donor or the potential donor is leaning now into the conversation saying, this is amazing. What do you need? That's essentially the, the art of the ask. So, so that's the retreat model. Now, you go to a one-on-one -on -one in an hour session, um, same deal. Um, be open and transparent with them to say, hey, I want to get with you to share with you as an update to results and outcomes of the ministry. We want to share with you or the organization. And we want to share with you where we're going. Um, but connect ask questions, get a sense of where are they in life, how's business, how's the family, whatever it is that your level of relationship is, go there, connect, letting them know on the front end what it is that you're wanting to meet with them about. Um, and then the openness of just saying, this is where we're at, these are the results to date, and this is where we're going. Do you have any thoughts or comments? Is there a part of this that you would like to play to help us advance our work together? So hopefully that helps on the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then and then you look at the, the, the gala or the lunch. Now, I look at the, the gala or the, the banquet as, as, as a clearly an evening fundraiser. We know the drill. We've all been invited to them and we've all facilitated them. The banquet fundraiser, whether it be a, a banquet, a gala, whatever it is that we're defining it, um, the intent is that um, we're going to ask people to support the mission of the organization. Pledge cards, raise the paddle, fund a need, whatever it is. Now, this has happened a number of times. In fact, it just happened recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago, at an event that I facilitated as it relates to the program, as well as it relates to the result of that program. In the previous years to this organization, um, the format was come in, music, um, somebody offered a message and a prayer for dinner, dinner happened, there was a guest speaker. After the guest speaker, the head of the organization came up and said, Here's an update to the organization, and this is what our need is, and here are pledge cards, and we're going to raise a paddle. Now, statistically, uh, they were seeing on an average of 38 to 45 percent gift response rates the night of their event, previous three years. We changed the format of the program to be this. Um, we had a little bit more as far as numbers of people in the room, but the format of uh, the evening was this. Um, people entered the room. It was a warm welcome right off the bat. 
myself and the founder of the organization, we sat on stage in front of the audience and we shared the mission and <clears throat> the mission and why does she feel called and led to do what she's called to do. So it was mission, her story got us to where we are to date. We shifted to dinner after a prayer and it was a strategic dinner conversation. The strategic dinner conversation was this. During dinner, who are the table hosts? And people raised their hand. I said, I would like the table hosts to share what it is about this organization that's brought you here tonight. And if you would share around the table what this organization means to you, as well as why did you in, um, invite uh, others around the table to be here this evening? So the, the dinner discussion for about 30 minutes became intentional and strategic. Kept the conversation on point to the organization. Now, after dinner, we showed a video. We, we shared a little bit about what the organization was doing um, as, a, um, as an update. The guest speaker um, actually spoke to the theme of what was happening in the landscape, both in America and around the world, as it relates to that organization's mission. So it wasn't the guest speaker coming and just giving a, a message. It was the message of what was happening in the landscape of this particular organization. We think that speaker went down off stage. The founder of the organization came back up on stage. Now we unpacked goals, objectives, results from the field, how many countries were being reached, the cumulative number of people that had been reached with this message over the previous calendar year. And then we transitioned right into conversationally what are the goals over the next three months between now and the end of the year, 2019 and 20? Looked at immediate goals and objectives, not needs, but immediate goals of what the organization wanted to accomplish over the next three months between now and the end of the year. What were specific goals and objectives for 2019? And then we floated a couple of initiatives high level for 2020. What we saw, what we saw from a result and an outcome when I spoke with the founder the day after the event, this was two Thursdays ago, so the next morning I spoke to her, and um, we saw gift pledge rates of 87%. 87% of giving units in the room made a gift or a pledge. And um, she reported that it was three times the cumulative dollar amount raised that evening. Now, in a gala or a banquet, it doesn't stop or end there. Um, the coaching to her directly was this. Who were the people in the room that you feel were strategic that you want to connect with over the next two to four weeks relationally and one-on-one? -on -one? You want to, one, thank them for their support. Two, you want to connect with them to see if they can move into the champion space, the champion for your organization zone. Um, and you can leverage them because they might want to open their home for a gathering, dessert, maybe invite you to a small group or Bible study or whatever. So look at who is it that came and was a part of your event that's hot, they're excited, they're engaged, they're on board, that you want to connect with. So that would be segment number one. Everyone in the room gets thanked, written, as well as we had teed up all board members to make thank you calls to everybody else that was in the room. And then here's another segment. So one segment was, who in the room does the founder or leadership of the organization need to connect with? That's number one. Number two is everyone was thanked in a written format and board members were tasked to make thank you calls. Here's the third segment. The third segment are who were people that you wished were in the room that weren't there? People that were on your donor file or on your prospect list, what is your intentionality to connect with them through an in-depth phone call, an update, share with them that they were missed, or ideally is to find a window where you can get with them relationally at some point soon after the event, two to four to six weeks out. And then a part of that is to challenge board and maybe some of your table hosts with who did you invite that couldn't make it? And with another group, we actually put two and a half weeks after their banquet, a lunch. And we were able to gather about 25 people for a lunch. So there's ways and things that you could do to harness, to gather with the luncheon objectives and the meetings. It was an update to share. Hopefully you get them on board. So hopefully that was, um, call it, um, both strategy and tactics, we want to get to um, the connectivity. We want to connect. That's the art of connecting with donors emotionally, spiritually, um, authentic with authenticity. We want them to really feel like that they're a part of the journey with the objective being, um, as you heard, hear me say this all the time, 
with clarity who we are, what we do, with confidence, based on results to date and stories and impact, we can achieve what we say we're going to do, undergirded with why do we do what we do? Why are we called to do this? Whether it be your mission as ministry or your organization, whatever it is, that whatever space that you're in, it's that the, the combination of those elements, clarity, confidence, and undergirded with passion. Now, um, let me kind of throw one, one more element to the message. And this is something that I share often. This is a part of, um, call it my little secret sauce that I share, whether it be at a donor retreat or at a banquet slash gala. In fact, I just shared it last week at a retreat. Once you've earned the right with that group to get the group who are typically business owners, entrepreneurs, business leaders in the community, um, professionals, um, this is what I share. Just like the convergence of clarity, confidence, and why we do what we do, I converge this. What is the opportunity that we see, just like a business, just like an entrepreneur? What is it that we see as an opportunity? Who is the team that we have in place? What are our goals, objectives, and milestones? And what's the cash flow that we need to achieve it? A business owner or an entrepreneur can relate to that. What is the opportunity? Who's on the team with goals, objectives, and milestones and results of what it is that we want to accomplish with cash flow to achieve it? Whether you're a small business, an entrepreneur, or a big business, the elements, those elements are exactly the same as an organization in the nonprofit world. So a donor or a prospective donor can immediately connect with, with that approach. So um, here's we kick off the fall and you're looking at banquets and gatherings and luncheons and you're pursuing relationships as you've um, come out of the summer campaign, uh, connecting with people relationally. Um, hopefully today's message as it relates to the art of connecting with intimacy and transparency and authenticity resonated with you today. Uh, we appreciate all that you're doing on behalf of uh, your organization and your role. And uh, we just hope that you guys have a great fall. Blessings. And we'll, uh, we'll be back with you here shortly with another update in our next video. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you. Uh, thank you for being a part of the journey and to doing good better together. Thanks so much.